one precision drill, one two pilot drills. This pilot drill is 2.0 millimeters in diameter. This pilot drill is 2.8 millimeters in diameter. These are the three drills that you will use for basal. If you can see over here, the word basal is written. Okay, pilot drills, basal. So these three drills is all the drills that you need for the basal. Okay, right. you will always go with the precision drill up to the full depth, followed by the 2.0 pilot drill up to the full depth for 3.5 millimeter basal implant. For 4.5 and above, you will additionally do the 2.8 millimeter pilot drill also. Okay? okay, and you have to go to the full length and that is you have to perforate slightly the cortical on the opposite side. Okay, so this is as far as the basal is concerned, the drilling. Then down here you have compressive, compressive and they are one, two, three, four, four compressive drills, 3.0, 3.5. 4.0, 5.0. Each drill corresponds to the diameter of the implant. Each of these drills are laser marked. I don't know if you can appreciate, but I will try to show it to you. There is these markings on each of these drills. If ever there is a doubt as to which, what these markings signify, Right here we have a gauge, so you can just take the drill, put it against the gauge and we can find out what the markings are. So on these particular drills the markings start at 8 millimeters, 8, 10, 12, 14 and of course the top of the drill will be 16. All the compression drills are demarcated the same way all the way up to the 5.0 drill okay okay so now the drilling protocol for the compression right i would still want you to start with the precision drill yeah do that up to the full depth okay now the protocol in compression differs a lot entirely depending on the bone density right so there is drilling for high density bone and drilling for low density bone. Okay. In low density bone, for example, D4, right. especially in the maxilla, you can do a precision drill right. and just after going to the full depth of whatever your desired implant length is, we can directly go ahead and place any implant into that particular preparation. Pri primarily in maxilla. Primarily in D4 bone, wherever right. that may be, but of course we will find it primarily in the posterior maxilla. Right. Right. Okay. During insertion of the implant, should you find a lot of resistance, right. as we discussed, that you try to limit the talk to about 70 ncm. Yeah. And if you find that at 50% of insertion of the implant, you are already getting 70 ncm, then okay. it's better to take the implant out. You can take just one of these pilot drills and right. just do a little drilling only into the cortical bone okay. and then go ahead and place the implant right. because maximum resistance is at the cortical area especially in D4 bone okay the idea is the compression implant as it enters into the cancellous bone or the spongy bone it has to condense it or compress it hence we don't like to drill the cancellous or the spongy bone we only like to drill the cortical bone okay right. Now this is the drilling protocol as it is in very poor or D4 quality bone. Say we are drilling in the anterior ma mandible, D1, maybe even D2. Okay. You do the precision drill up to the full depth. Then you go on to what we call the form drills because these 30, 3.5, 4.0 and 5.0 are the same form as the internal diameter of the compression implant. The compression implant has two diameters. One diameter, of course, you will read on the box, say, for example, 4.0. But that is the diameter at the end of the threads. And it has very deep threads. So these drills are matching the internal. The internal means the solid part, the core of the implant. They match that. Okay. So in very dense bone, 
then you could go ahead and do the corresponding drill to the diameter up to the desired length again and then you could go ahead and place the implant okay and say for example in medium quality bone uh, for example if you are placing a 4 millimeter implant you can do the corresponding drill up to the 3.5 right don't have to do it all the way so you start with minimum drilling start only with the precision right and that's the time you get the feel of the bone bone quality good mm -hmm. go to the next drill bone okay. quality not seeming so good stop there mm -hmm. and put the implant one diameter larger right right bone quality very good go to the entire length entire diameter also okay right. so this is as far as the drilling is concerned then uh, along with it you saw yesterday many times I had to use a drill extension it happens especially in lower anteriors distal to premolars this is a drill extension it's fairly simple to use you just have to place it inside and it locks and sometimes with sometimes the pressure or maybe blood sometimes it can get locked so there is a slot over here you just put any instrument like a probe or something and you just turn it Okay, you just have to lever it like, like this and it comes out. Okay? okay, so no need to struggle with it at all. So this is the drill extension. Besides that, you will receive a placement aid. This is your standard placement aid. It is good for reduced mouth openings. It is good for reduced mouth openings. Uh, so the ratchet will insert all the way. Uh, so the idea is first you put the implant with the hand okay. as tight as it can get then you remove the green holder then mm. you put the placement aid and you mm. take the ratchet the basic kit of course has the basic ratchet right. it has in and out right. whichever side you read that is the action that is happening okay. so it just slips onto this it has got a good fit the placement aid will not fall out of the ratchet so mm. there is no okay and it goes in all the way Okay. 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 So you place it and then you can just ratchet it in. Mm -hmm. As I said, sometimes you get stuck where the implant is inserted about 90% and okay. the torque you feel is too high. It is possible to just take the ratchet out, put it on the outside, take two turns out to release okay. the pressure a little bit, okay. wait a few seconds and you can go back and then turn it in and you will find that the implant is progressing a little more easier. Right. So you can use the implant also like sort of a bone expansion screw. Okay. Yeah. Two turns out, five turns in. Okay. Right. And that's how you can go ahead and put also the implant in. Uh, besides this, the only important thing you need to be concerned about in the ratchet is the maintenance. It is very important that your assistant's oil yeah. this through this slot over here. Okay. There is a slot given here. You see this whole thing is open from here. Yeah. Of course, you will have blood saliva also going inside. So, you know, it can get clotted and there can be jamming of the mechanism. You make sure they nicely oil generously through this. Run it many times after the surgery is over to make sure all the blood is out. Yeah. Okay. And then you can put it for autocleaving. Right. It is also possible to open this ratchet for an even more thorough cleaning and servicing. Okay. Right. It's just got one simple spring inside. Right. You can open it, oil it, wash it, put that spring back in place and close it again okay? okay sometimes if you feel that you know the ratchet is missing you're not feeling the clicks that means look at this part this part may have gotten loose so okay. just make sure this is nice and tight and then you will have the proper action of the racket okay right. ratchet. so this is the basic kit for the single piece implant uh, there's a tray system you can open it up you can keep one part on top, you can use this for some other instruments, for maybe the hand drivers, which you may purchase extra. One for the drill and one for the hand tools. You have to buy it extra, of course. Okay? And there's a place below for it. Also, uh, you can ask them while giving you the kit to exchange the basic ratchet for the talk ratchet. Yeah. So that is also possible. There may be a small increment in cost, but that is it. So this is basically the kit. Everything is pretty well demarcated. Mm -hmm. All the tools are labeled. All the areas of all the tools are labeled. So your assistants can put everything back in place properly. Okay. Uh, 
the impression procedure live and in the video yes. yesterday and in photographs. Yes. So yes. you've taken the impression with the TRA, the transfer. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me show you again what it looks like. Then once you have taken the impression with the transfer cap. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. You can take the impression with the transfer cap. Once you have done that, you will take an analog, you will place the analog into it and you will send it to the lab. Yeah. When the lab pours it, this is what it will look like. Okay. Of course, without saying you have already prepped the heights of the abutments as required and so on and so forth. Okay. okay. Now, in a case like this, once the lab has a model like this, okay, this is when you have done only reduction of height. Please remember. Okay. okay. You also have what you know as a burnout cap. Now, instead of him putting wax over this and you know, you see some places the margins are a little bit below the gum and things like that, you know, he may not be able to reach it properly with the wax or he may leave a void. So this is why we have the burnout cap, which is the entire correct length. And once we place this burnout cap, he has to place it until it fits completely. And okay. if there is some gingiva that is interfering, he can just trim it off with the scalpel and push it in completely. Yeah, that way you know that you have gone to the full length of the apartment and you have a lot of retention and good emergence. Okay, so on this now he can just add wax. So as an example now, I am putting one here, I am putting one here, okay, and I am putting one here. Okay. Now all he has to do is add wax in between them and that's it, it's done and he can take it out and he can cast it. Yeah. It's that easy. So making the wax pattern is a lot faster, otherwise adding wax drop by drop would take about 15 minutes even for an experienced technician. That's, you know, 45 minutes gone. Okay. And this is why he's not able to give you the prosthesis soon enough. Maybe he'll take longer. With this, he'll just do it, he'll set it for casting, it'll be ready the next day. These burnouts have been cut according to the way they were in the mouth, right? Yes, also will be cut according to the way they were in the mouth. Correct, perfectly. Okay. Now, this is one sit. Now, you've understood this part? Good. Now, this is regarding the straight. Then we have some other burnouts. Okay. Now, for example, for the pterygoid. We want to correct the angle or if some implants extremely crooked. Mm -hmm. We want to correct the angle. We have these two parts, A15. Okay. And we have another part, A25. This is the burnouts in 25 degrees and in 15 degrees. Okay. I'm going to take one out so I can show you. Also, we have another one called A0. Okay. And this is the one which is straight, same like the BOP, like the, uh, the other yellow burnout, okay. but this one has a shoulder. So okay. this gives a much broader emergence, plus for people who are concerned about finish lines and shoulders and things like that, you can use that one. Okay. okay. So this is example, the one for the 15 degree connection. Now if you see here, we see that this and this implant is slightly angulated. Yes. So I can put this in such a way as to correct the angulation. Can you see now? Yeah. If I see this wall, it is corrected. Yeah. So he will place it on this. He will do some wax up if he needs to do a wax up. If okay. he doesn't, there's no need to really use the model also. You can send him, for example, a bunch of these and you can tell him cast five of them and send them back and you can have them already with you in the clinic. Okay. So that would mean basically that you just, uh, once you place the implant and say the torque is less, it's only 25 or something mm -hmm. and you don't want to bend it, yeah. you don't, uh, have to you can just take the pre you already got this casted you can just take it put it in there in a position like this that corrects the angle cement it yeah. and once you cement it you see this red part that is coming out of here cut just cut it out and then you can see now you have two perfectly parallel implants okay. and more so in the case of the pterygoid where I say I don't like bending normally we have the similar one with the 25 okay. I will also open one and show you so you can see the amount of correction it really does it's quite a bit Okay. Can you keep the cast of the pterygoid? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have one of the pterygoid. Okay. And uh, so, uh, say the, I don't know, this one here, the last one. Okay. This is the same one actually. So, you can put it at any angle, any way you want. This way, this way, this way. Okay. So, now if you see here very clearly, if this is the implant, look, you're getting an entire abutment entirely in a different angle. It's a full abutment, full thickness. Look at the top. Okay. It's full thickness. Contrary to if you didn't use this and if I had to prep this abutment to that angle, what would be left is a very sharp and very small stub. Yeah. 
and you're never going to prep the base part right and the base is where the base is where this thing cements right at the base okay that's it so you cut all this off and you have an entirely new abutment okay so what I would normally recommend is don't have them in wax you buy a few of them you send them to the lab already have four or five of them casted and kept in your clinic when the patient comes you've done the implant if you don't want to bend put this in place cement it cut it off and then take the impression one time and send it to the lab okay and then here you can see you have a shoulder and you have everything so it just makes everything a lot more neater and easier also to manage emergence to manage cement to manage hygiene so many things yeah